Oh. oh my gosh! All right, guys, we got a fun one today here. There has been a community design that's been out for almost a decade from a gentleman called Tech Dad, and that plane is called the X-41 Delta Storm. Our laser master himself, Jason McQuiston, has taken that design and reimagined it in a way that builds quickly, flies great, and also has some really cool features to it. Not only are we gonna be taking you through our classic design process from the test flights all the way up to the final product, but we're also gonna take another community design and we're gonna stitch three of these things together to fly a super awesome formation. We got a lot of work to do, let's get to it. So we're heading out to manufacturing here. That's where Jason works. We call him the laser master and it's for a good reason. He is absolutely incredible with lasers, but also an incredible designer and pilot as well. We're gonna go down and see Jason and we're gonna put his plane to the test. You ready to fly an airplane? I'm always ready to fly an airplane. Well, we're gonna do this right in the back driving range. This is where you test fly most of your planes back then, right? Yep, this is my own little beta stomping ground. I love it, I love it. So like I said, you guys have made possible for us to employ a lot of family members and also a lot of friends and also their families too. So thank you so much for your support. Uh, we're ready to put this in the air. Yeah, let's do it. All right. All right, so you're gonna take it up for us? Yeah, I'm gonna take it up and uh, I'm gonna give you guys the sticks, see what you think. Awesome, let's see what it's got. All right. It's super, super easy and stable to hand launch. Yeah. <laughs> so this one is flying off the, uh, the just the regular B pack, 2212. All right. On a uh, 3S 1800 milliamp battery pack. And as you can see, it has, it has great punch. Yeah, but it's honestly like a moderate speed. It's not overwhelming, is it? No, no, and this is the uh, 10 inch prop. The better setup is gonna be on the basic B. Well, Josh, well, you wanna give this a shot? <laughs> I'm just loving this here. <laughs> all right. All right, my turn? Yep. All right. Yeah, originally we had 1300, which which will work. Uh, the aircraft's gonna be kind of just in a, in a Delta Harrier. Yep. Speaking of stable, I'm full up right now. One of the beauty of canards here is the front nose will drop before anything else does. And you can see I am just being really bad to it. And it's just clover leaf and down. I still have full oiler on control, even dead stick. And she's just working around for me. I love it. All right, Dave, you gotta try this. Jason, this is awesome, man. Yeah, I'm, uh, thanks. I'm excited uh, for it to get in everybody's hands. And uh, no time's like 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy fast and it's super easy to build. Um, I went through a lot of efforts to make sure all the all the parts and everything uh, fit together real well, especially in the hatch and the nose in the canard area. I love it. I love it. It flies great. Um, just simple. Yeah, it's simple. <laughs> That's a good way to say it. I love it. So Dave, I think what we need to do is we need to have a little fun with this and uh, put some FPV on it. And then you've seen in the community where the one gentleman took the four alphas and put them together. Yeah. What do you see if we make a couple more of these and we put them all together? That would be cool. You down for that? Yeah. All right, let's see if Dave can land it. Beautiful. All right. He just scratched my feet, job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take this back to HQ. Jason, great job. Here. All right, I, awesome. I, uh, I can't wait for you guys to check it out. It's gonna be fun. We have more to do, FPV, and a little special project at the end. We'll see you guys there. All right, Josh, we gotta make some decisions here. So yeah. I'm, I'm leaning towards this just because I like the way it looks. It looks pretty yeah, cool. I like that. But I also like this because it just makes it bigger. It does. Um, it's definitely going to be easier to do it this way as well. I think there's a better chance of it flying decent that way. I'm, I'm thinking if we do this, we could actually just still use the canards as canards. And then just <laughs> right aileron, left aileron. And know? then nothing to that Yeah, one. right. I like that That's one. That's what I'm kind of thinking. Yeah. So if we could get this close enough uh, and make this work, in a future video, we could actually have you work on like a release mechanism. To split them apart, that that'd be, be awesome. Let us know in the comments if you want to see that, but I'm voting for this because then you can yeah, support it. I'm thinking just a boom here and a boom here. Yes, yep, and that will work. And it'll also be the most covered too. It'll, right. like, it'll look like they're really flying in formation. 
So uh, I think we do that. Awesome. So I'm going to get to work on this and okay. uh, you're going to work on some FPV stuff. Right? I'm going to steal that one right there. I'm going to take it out. We have the new HD zero monitor and that monitor can actually do analog and HD zero. I want to do a stress test on it and see how it behaves. It has a killer DVR and also see how this flies FPV. All right. I'm Good taking story. that one. <laughs> So this is pretty exciting here. We just took delivery on our HD zero FPV monitors. Now the really cool thing about this monitor is it not only picks up HD zero high definition, but it also picks up typical analog. It even improves the quality and the reception through its antennas and something I think called interpolation. It has a killer DVR with better quality. And also you can tap into your standard definition goggles if you have a video in and instantly get HD zero and a better quality for your analog. I'm gonna go ahead and install a camera on the Space Fighter. Steph and I are gonna go out and have some fun. I think this is gonna make an awesome FPV platform. You done give me a launch? Me? Yes, I will launch this. I will place the I will place this down here first for the moment, and then I will throw you. Alrighty. So right there. All right, ready, seven. Right there. There it goes. Here we go. All right, we are flying, and I got a good signal. A good signal? Yep. I have uh, I have solid signal. There's a little static. Yep. All right, I'm just gonna fly around. I'm gonna let Michael get close to me here. So as far as an FPV platform, this is pretty awesome. And recently, HD, uh, many different versions. DJI is what we use mostly, but we are gonna start learning more and more about HD Zero because they are coming out some really innovative solutions that are economical and very, very versatile. Yes. So right now I'm pretty solid. I'm gonna go ahead and do a turn to the right here. And this is where, typically on this tiny little Caddx Ant, this is pretty amazing range. This is like a sub $40 yeah. little camera VTX all in one. This is this is budget. Pretty good. And how's your reception? Yeah, mine, it was a little static out there, but now that we're coming back right over the trees, it's solid, as solid as a rock. And I'm just getting little blips here and there. Yeah. You gotta watch out for those antennae. I'm gonna do a nice little pass down to there. <laughs> And this is, you know, this one here is incredibly manageable too. Just little bits of static here and there. Yep. I'm looking forward to comparing the DVR because that's one frustrating thing is you have this amazing experience, you want to share it with your friends. Right. And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, look at my static or look at my, you know, really grainy video. I love this. Yeah, dude, this is a sweet looking view. And it's pretty stable too. I want to shoot cool. the tunnel, but there's some stragglers. Haha, <laughs> the stragglers. I'm gonna go right behind the world here. Whee! I'm gonna go right over. There. <laughs> I love this place. It is beautiful. Hello! Right. Oh! Power lines! Oh, the power lines. <laughs> Dude! I, I was, was so in, lost in the moment! I know! <laughs> I wasn't sure where I was like, he remembers like, about those, sure, doesn't he? Surely he's not gonna do that. Yeah, let's see how when you go high in the sky, buddy. Oh, I love this. And the neat thing I love about this little view. monitor is it can grow with you. A lot of times when you change technology from like maybe analog to HD, whether yeah. it's DJI, all your old stuff becomes obsolete. Right. What I love about this monitor is you don't have to give up your old stuff. You know, some things you just want to do bad things with, you know, and fly and push the wind <laughs> right, yeah. hit trees maybe. This is this is where all that old gear that you have doesn't just go away. That's you know? phenomenal. All That's right, phenomenal. I better land and, and check her out. The limits. Dude, yes, yeah, inverted. Can you fly inverted at FPV? Yeah. Is that weird? It is. Dude, that is so <laughs> weird. I would be so mis discombobulated. It's so much fun taking little kids up for flights, and then you, you do something really sketchy, and then they grab onto their seats, you know? Dude, that's awesome. All right, I'm going to bring it in for a landing. All right. Let's see if I can get close to you guys. Yeah! Oh, of course, I put it right on the asphalt. Sorry. Hi, okay, I'm going to hit record stop. And I think you can just turn yours off. Mine off, okay. Yep, because it should have an automatic feature to record. Here we go, ready? Bobbed it. It's be off. It'd really, be really embarrassing if I was wrong on that one, but we'll find out in just a second. Right. Friends, do us a favor here. Um, Edgewater Air Park is open to you. Just simply sign the waiver, come out, enjoy the grounds that you need yes. possible. We have, um, it'll depend on when this goes out, we have our Wings Over Edgewater event. So we have a Labor Day event. We have a lot of other events, and also people are always coming out and enjoying the grounds. We want to make sure you guys make this your home too. Yeah. All right, let's go check out the v DVR footage. Check it out. So basically I just made a plywood mount here and we've got our boom mounts that we used for our VCRs way back in the day and a piece of carbon fiber tubing. We're going to slide this right underneath the fuselage and hook it on. I'm going to have the same thing on the other end to hook the other one on and then we're going to do it towards the front of the planes and then in the center one it'll just lay right on too. Do you think this thing's going to work? 
I think so. The biggest thing I think we have to do is figure out CG. It's going to be kind of tricky, but I think we'll get it. All right, so Dave, in order to make this fly formation, we can't just have conventional aileron, conventional aileron. This one can be conventional aileron, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, if we do it that way, I think they'd be fighting each other. So we need to take those two, make them go the same direction, like up, and then these ones would go down. Yep. So this would be one aileron, and this would be the aileron on the other side. Yep, and then this is just completely normal. Yes. And are you thinking of just leaving these alone? Yeah, I think it, I think if we have those as elevators, I think it's going to work with the canard form. I like it. Now something we're going to do, which is pretty cool here, is we have uh, the pocket radios and our Radio Master radios with ELRS. I can actually go in here through Wi-Fi and I can change the bind phrase to all the same. In this case, it's your radio, so it's going to be the David. And as long as the receiver sees the David, it'll bind to that radio, which means I can instantly take a plane that I was flying, change the bind phrase, and it'll instantly go to his radio, which is really cool. But also, we have the benefit of uh, basically reassigning ports. We can do a lot of different things where we can I can plug this in and I can say port number five is now the rudder. And I can do it all through a Wi-Fi link with a cheap, simple receiver that's super reliable. And that also means that we're not going to have any wires going between these. We'll just put separate batteries in yep. each one and we do all the mixing in the radios and we're all set. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if you want to plug this one into channel six, I'll go ahead and grab your radio and uh, make the two. Awesome. This is very <laughs> satisfying. <laughs> it's, oh, my... my <laughs> Landed yours not on. Yes, they look like look at this. <laughs> That's therapy. Ready for a thrust test? Yep. <laughs> it's gonna have no problem. If it balances, we are gonna have some ridiculous power. So on this plane here, I'm actually programming channels seven and eight, mixing them to aileron, which is just simply as a couple button pushes, and then reversing them as I need. This is conventional and then this is programmed to channel aileron and then channel six. So six, channel one, channel six, channel seven, and channel eight, all are aileron with separate programs. <laughs> How cool is that? It's awesome. All right, we're ready to go. So we're discussing things right now because this, this topic of center of gravity is kind of like a gamble. Yeah, like I've never messed with this stuff before. We didn't do any research, yeah. we just strapped them together. Because that's what we did. Yeah. Um, so all three of these airplanes, we know exactly where center of gravity is. We know how to get center of gravity and they fly great. But the problem that we have right now is they're strapped together. So does that technically make it one airframe? Or are they just three individual airplanes tethered together? Because in order to make that fly, like we're going to have a stupid amount of weight if we treat it as if it's a single airplane. Mm -hmm. My thought is if it was like say like a floppy tether between them all, almost like you're towing them up, yeah. I feel like you'd have individual CGs, but since they are 100% tethered together, I feel like it's just basically taking a whole saw and punching it through a big plane. Yeah, I think it's one airplane too. But part of me wants to see if it's real tail heavy. What we'll know is immediately, it'll want to just like porpoise up and we can cut the throttle since you have a landing gear on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, let's just put it on the yeah. runway and see. Yeah, let's see what it does. If there's any chance of it flying, I should be able to fly it. I mean, you fly sketchier things than I do. Wait, is that backwards? I don't know. No, that's right. I've been kind of a transmitter hog lately. Oh, I have no issues with that. It looks so cool on the runway. I love the optional landing gear. It does look cool. This will be good because if it's going to act weird, we'll know it on takeoff. Yeah. Um, hopefully I can uh, just kind of roll out. Yeah. Now quickly, here's a here's a quick tip for you. If you ever notice that your plane is just stupid squirrely on the ground and it's not tracking straight at all, oftentimes that could be an indicator that it's tail heavy. All right. All right. So Mike's going to go up. I put you like right in line with him. I'm sorry. You're good. All right. You ready, Mike? Yep. Ready, Noah? You got this, buddy. All right. Here we go. Uh -oh. oh my gosh. It is fine, but I lost a prop or something. Oh no, this is bad. I have barely any control. What prop did he pull off? Ooh. Oh. Did he land it or no? Um, possibly. <laughs> Dude, is it flying it, it is flying, yeah. It flies pretty good other than... That stuff um, was really I'm bad with a, it. I don't know what popped off exactly. Just don't put it on the top of the tree. That's the that's bad thing. Oh, I can't it's believe... It's fast. How's your pitch control? Pretty good. Oh, it was a landing gear. <laughs> landing gear popped off and hit a prop. It went back in it. 
Okay, we can fix this. <laughs> yes, that was awesome. How'd it feel? It felt pretty good, actually. It's very fast, though. It, like, it wanted to drop when you let off the throttle. Wow, oh, that, that says but a lot. Okay. That's cool. Okay, so. so just pop landing gear back on, change the prop. Yeah, why don't we get, to, I'll bring the hot glue gun down. Let's just glue the hot glue, or let's just glue the landing gear in. Yeah, that'll work. So. I mean, we do have a lot of weight on these. These are designed for our simple series, so there's a lot more weight here. It's kind of expected, I guess. So we're just gonna glue the removable landing gear on. That way this doesn't happen again. Yeah, well, I, I was explaining there's a lot of weight on this compared to our simple series. Yes. You think that's good? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Round two. Are you gonna try it this time? I don't know, man. He did so good, I feel like he should be able to do it again. Bigger SD It definitely took a lot more speed than I was expecting. Yeah, yeah. Which is kind of wild. I could imagine what this could do with differential thrust. You'd have a three-way formation flat. <laughs> kind of like we got to do with RC sailors. All right, we ready to go? Yep, you ready? I hope I charge the oh, look at that. It flies great. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, you barely have any back pressure. Could use a little bit of trim. I see why, too. Oh, look at the wing. You see that? <laughs> yeah, it's just so, holding up a little so bit. So the center wing is actually from the prototype model, and what Jason did is he put a KF step on it to make more strength. But the center one doesn't have that, and it's been through the war and testing. So uh, it's kind of spilling once in a while, which leaves only the front <laughs> canard to do what it needs to do. It looks good. It does. That's the closest formation we'll ever fly. <laughs> Can you feel it when it spills or no? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that wing. <laughs> oh, that looks awesome. <laughs> you know what? I kind of want to push the limits and break it, but the other thing I'd like to do is also fly at a flight test, which is June 19th through the 23rd. Should I do a roll? Yeah, do a roll. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm sure this is just how the Blue Angels do it, huh? And I am running pretty high throttle here. Like you are. Over over half for sure. More like three quarter to full. You're doing great. That is so cool. So that I guess wing we, is getting worse. <laughs> yep. I guess we answered our question here. Where's the CG? We just did it like normal on yeah, this one. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, all three planes we just equaled out and then yeah. stuck them together. I don't know if it's always that way, so. I don't know either. But don't quote us on that, people. Yeah. <laughs> now, friends, this was inspired by our community. The best treasure we have is our community, and we always get inspired by them. We love taking different things that they've done and also putting to the test ourselves with a little bit of a twist. We're gonna bring it down. This was awesome. Landon. Ooh. <laughs> That's why we it have It drops like a brick, though. <laughs> it does. It definitely does. Great job. Thank you very much. No problem. That was awesome. All right. So, friends, this is all in celebration of the brand new release. Huge shout out to the gentleman that originally designed the Zelta Storm. I think the testing is done. We pushed it to the limits. Yeah, for this sure. is ready for you on the store. So, make sure you check out the link down below. And also, if you want to see the inspiration that originally inspired this, that's the Delta Storm. We're going to have the link to that gentleman's page so you can download those free plans if you want to build his version as well. All right, let's go uh, see how bad I messed up the landing gear on that. <laughs> Jason, you did a great job designing this, man, and we'll see you next time.